Al Baradai, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, stated quite definitively there is no evidence of a nuclear weapons program in Iran. The uh, recent resolution, the Kyle Lieberman Amendment and the recent U.S. sanctions against Iran, which uh, one of the charges is that Iran has been helping uh, insert what they call insurgents in Iraq. There's practically no evidence of that either. Um, based on what we know as evidence, uh, there's not a lot of reasons for uh, U.S. policy to be as aggressive right now towards Iran as it is, certainly not for the stated reason. What really does motivate U.S. policy towards Iran? Well, if I can first make a comment about the stated reasons, uh, the very fact that we're discussing them uh, tells us a lot about the uh, sort of intellectual culture and moral culture in the United States. I mean, suppose it was true that Iran is uh, helping uh, insurgents in Iraq. I mean, was the United States helping insurgents in, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan? Did we think there was anything wrong with that? I mean, Iraq's a country that was invaded and is under military occupation. You can't have a serious discussion about whether someone is, else is interfering in it. The basic assumption underlying the discussion is that we own the world. So if we invade and occupy another country, then it's a criminal act for anyone to interfere with it. But what about the nuclear weapons? I mean, are there countries with nuclear weapons in the region? Israel has a couple hundred nuclear weapons. The United States gives more support to it than any other country in the world. The Bush administration is trying very hard to push through an agreement that not only authorizes India's illegal acquisition of nuclear weapons, but assists it. Uh, that's what the uh, U.S. Indo uh, the nuclear pact is about. And furthermore, there happens to be uh, an obligation of the states and the Security Council and elsewhere to uh, move towards establishing a nuclear weapons-free zone in the region. That would include Iran and uh, Israel and uh, any U.S. forces deployed there. Uh, that's part of uh, Resolution 687. Now to your question. The real reasons for the attack on Iran, the sanctions and so on, go back into history. I mean, in we like to forget the history. Iranians don't. Uh, in 1953, the United States and Britain uh, overthrew the parliamentary government and installed a brutal dictator, the Shah, who ruled until 1979. And during his rule, incidentally, uh, the United States was strongly supporting the same programs that are objecting to today. In 1979, uh, the population overthrew the dictator. And since then, the United States has been essentially torturing Iran. Uh, first it tried a military coup, then it uh, supported Saddam Hussein during uh, uh, Iraq's invasion of Iran, uh, which killed uh, hundreds of thousands of people. And then after that was over, the United States started imposing harsh sanctions on Iran. And now it's escalating that. Uh, the point is that Iran is out of control. You know, it's supposed to be a U.S. client state, as it was under the Shah, and it's uh, refusing to play that role. The sanctions that, that were just uh, issued recently, the beginnings of a kind of act of war, this ratcheting up of the rhetoric right at a time when the IAEA uh, is saying, in fact, Iran's cooperating in the process. Uh, but it, it's all coming down to this question of, does Iran even have its right to enrich uranium for a civilian nuclear program, which in fact it has under the non-proliferation treaty. Uh, but Bush in his last press conference, where he had his famous World War III warning, has said even the knowledge of having nuclear weapons we won't permit, never mind uh, a civilian program. Uh, this puts the U.S. policy on a collision course with the IAEA, with, 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 with international law. There was a, just a couple of years ago from uh, 2004 through 2006, Iran did agree to suspend all uranium enrichment, all, even what everyone agrees they're legally entitled to. That was an agreement with the European Union. Uh, they agreed to suspend all uranium enrichment, and in return, the European Union was to provide uh, what were called uh, full guarantees on security issues. That means getting the United States to call off its threats to attack and destroy Iran. Well, the European Union didn't live up to its obligation, but they couldn't get the U.S. to stop it. Uh, so the Iranians then also pulled out. 
and began to return to uranium enrichment. The way that's described here is the Iranians broke the agreement. The experts are saying, including El Badrai and others, that if you can enrich uranium to something just under 5%, which is apparently what's needed for civilian purposes, you're most of the way there towards the technology of having a bomb. That once you have that enrichment technology, yeah, that's it's true not that much further towards a bomb. Yeah, but that's true of every every developed country in the world. Why pick out Iran? And it's true of Japan. It's true of Brazil. It's uh, true of Egypt. And in fact, one could say here, I tend to agree with the Bush administration. Uh, in the Non-Proliferation Treaty, there's an article, Article Four, uh, which says that countries signing the NPT are uh, allowed to develop nuclear energy. Well, okay, that made some sense in 1970, but by now technology has developed enough uh, so that it reach, has reached the point that you described. When you've developed nuclear energy, you're not that far from nuclear weapons. So yeah, I think something should be done about that, but that has nothing special to do with Iran. Uh, and in fact, it's a much more serious problem for the, the nuclear weapon states who are obligated under that same treaty to make good faith efforts to eliminate nuclear weapons altogether. And in fact, there are some solutions to that. Al Baradei proposed a couple of years ago that uh, no states should develop uh, weapons grade materials. All uh, high enrichment should be done by an international agency, maybe the IAEA or something else, and then countries should apply to it uh, if they want enriched uranium for nuclear energy and the uh, international agency should determine whether they're doing it for peaceful means. As far as I'm aware, there's only one country that uh, formally agreed to El Baradai's proposal. That was Iran. And there's more. I mean, th there's an international treaty uh, called the FISBAN, to ban production of fissile materials, except under international control. The United States has been strongly opposed to that a verifiable treaty. Nevertheless, it did come to the General Assembly, the United Nations, General, the Disarmament Commission, and the General Assembly, which overwhelmingly voted in favor of it. The Disarmament Commission vote was, I think, 147 to 1, the United States being the 1. Unless a verifiable uh, fissile materials uh, treaty is uh, passed and implemented, uh, the world very well may move towards nuclear disaster. Do you think we're actually moving towards a military confrontation, or are we seeing a, a game of brinksmanship? Well, whether purposely or not, yes, we're moving towards a military confrontation.